Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher, the program where you can find peace through understanding your dreams and visions. I'm Robin Hardin. I'm coming to you today from Stanton, Virginia, from a family reunion where I met, for the very first time, my cousin Chris, and I was able to show her how the Lord was speaking to her through dreams. My cousin Alicia has been on the program many times, but this is the first time I get to sit with her face to face. Plus, there's a dream selfie sent in by destiny. Hey, I'm here in Stanton, Virginia at a family reunion. We did this a couple years ago and I surprised some of my cousins with a mic in their face and a camera. And today I'm here with my sister-in-law, Chris, and she's from Utah. Chris, welcome to Virginia. You. And you have a dream you want to share with me. I do. Okay. Um, I, I have a dream every time I get stressed about something something really serious like closing on a house, buying a car, um, that type of stress. I always have the same dream. I have an uncle that has passed and I always, the dream goes as I pull up to his house, he comes down the sidewalk, he walks down the stairs and we walk up the stairs together. We go in my grandma's house and we sit down and we have coffee together and my dream ends. So this is a grandma that has passed, yes. I'm assuming, and this was a safe place for you, wasn't it, growing yeah. up? Mm -hmm. And he was an uncle that you had a good relationship yes. with, and that's what the Lord is doing. He's sending you someone that you know, mm -hmm. that you trust, that you feel so comfortable with, and this is, he feels your stress. He knows what you're going through, and he knows how to relieve you of that stress. So he brings you all these people and homes and symbols mm -hmm. that are relaxing and peaceful. And he just does it every time, so it's a pattern. And the nice thing about that is you know now from the past, mm -hmm. when I'm stressed about something, Uncle so-and-so is gonna come down and we're gonna walk together Mm -hmm. And we're, we're, you're going up, which is spiritual promotion. Mm. It's elevation. Mm. So you're going up together. And then you sit down and coffee is relaxing. It can be a stimulant, but that's in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But it, also the fellowship is relaxing. And because he's done it in the past, you know, he's going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is the Bible tells us we can ask for dreams. We can talk to God within our dreams. So when you know that something stressful is coming, mm -hmm. it is absolutely okay to say, Lord, I need that. Give me a dream. Give me something right. to help me with that. That's so sweet. That's sweet. My name is Brian. I'm a student pastor at the Fellowship in Mount Juliet, and we are here uh, adopting Joseph's Storehouse this morning, and we are excited to serve. Guys, are you excited to serve? Yeah. Each month, churches, businesses, and people just like you adopt a month to help distribute food and God's Word to hundreds of hungry families. I'm having a, what they call a relapse MS, and I just got out of the hospital today. I'm so grateful for everybody here at Joseph's that gave me this walk. <laughs> now my summer finally put a murder in it. You, too, can be God's hands. Your love offering to Joseph Storehouse will feed many families. I'm here with a guest that many of you have seen before, but never one-on-one. -on -one. This is Alicia. Usually we see her on a little phone app because she sends me selfies. But we're in Virginia where she lives at a family reunion. And so finally I get to have her face-to-face -face in person. I'm excited because usually, you know, you have to tell me the whole dream on your phone and you have to wait till I finally can get to it and get it back to you. So this is going to be exciting for us. So tell me what's, what's going on. Okay. So a little over a year ago, I woke up early one morning and um, as you know, I have lots of small children and it just so happened that this morning um, they slept in and I got like some legit quiet prayer time 
chatting with God and um, I just heard him tell me just to trust and of course I had no idea what that um, was going to mean but um, later on that day I was out with my kids and we were at a field trip my husband calls me and tells me that he's just found out that his mother has been diagnosed with okay. colon cancer so she was diagnosed with cancer for a third time. You know, I fell apart in the car and I was like, oh, thank you God for holding me together. And so all that day it was kind of um, somber-like. Mm -hmm. And But because of that time that I had with the Lord, I was so peaceful. Mm -hmm. So I get home and my husband's there. And of course, you know, it's just a hard day. Oh, it's sure. a sad day. Mm -hmm. And I almost felt insensitive mm -hmm. because I was so at peace because mm -hmm. of, you know, that time that I had with the Lord earlier that morning. So we fast forward a year later, um, several months ago, and um, my mother-in-law is like in the throes of, you know, she's just really sick and um, it's pretty obvious that time is short. Mm -hmm. And so I have this dream and me and my husband are sitting in a, like a church setting. It feels like a sanctuary, but it's very informal. And uh, we're sitting side by side and I'm holding my baby, and my baby is dressed in white, and because uh, you know we really did have a baby, but so I'm holding her and she's in white, and then someone comes and brings a baby to my husband in a baby carrier, and the baby's wrapped in black. And so I woke up and I was like, I know this means something, and um, but I didn't know what it meant, and so my mother-in-law at this point um, was really struggling during the day because my father-in-law still works during the day mm -hmm. and um, even though they're retirement age um, you know he still has a full-time job and mm -hmm. so one evening I went over to their house and um, it was just me and I told my father-in-law I said we're not gonna leave her alone um, you know one of us is gonna help take care of her during the day while you're at work and of course he was like no no you know because he knows we have lives and we have stuff going mm -hmm. on I'm like no we're gonna do this we're gonna make sure she's taken care of and um, so for the weeks after that, you know, that's what we're doing. We're basically, either my father-in-law, my husband, or me are with her, taking care of her, you know, feeding her, bathing her, all those things. Mm -hmm. And um, so then she, so she's really sick at this point, and we realize that days are very numbered. Mm -hmm. And so hospice was called in and uh, we're kind of like camped out at our house. Mm -hmm. And the doctor did say, you know, at this point she could go at any time. Well, um, I had this dream where my father-in-law was sitting right at her bedside, taking care of her, you know, just sitting there being with her. And it's like, I can see him inside the house, but I'm also looking at the house in the dream. Mm -hmm. And it is beautiful. It's something out of a movie. It's like the sun is like shining down. It's like warm. There's like birds chirping and little butterflies and kids playing mm -hmm. in the yard. And um, so I just knew God was with us during mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So then we were at a Thursday. It was a Thursday. And that evening she like stopped breathing. And you know, my husband's an EMT and her, her heart stopped. And so, you know, we thought that's it you know she's gone and so after several minutes she took a breath so that was a Thursday and so she held on for another three days wow. and during that time we were just camped out at her bedside and we're mm -hmm. thinking this is her last moments this is her last moments and um, so during that time where we were um, just kind of in the waiting stage I had another dream and it didn't feel warm and fuzzy, <laughs> mm -hmm. but um, it was a picture of a little girl, and um, she like came out of the photo and looked at me and like stuck her tongue out at me, like she was kind of being playful but kind of being mean, mm -hmm. and then went back in the photo, and I woke up and I was like, that's a little weird. Mm -hmm. So I went out into their living room that morning and I saw the photo. I was like, I dreamt about that photo last night, and. Um, I said, is that Valerie, which was their daughter, who also passed away from cancer? Mm -hmm. And um, he said, no, that's actually Phyllis. That's her when she was a little child. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I dreamt about that photo last night. And um, and then she passed. And, mm. so, yeah. Well, those are all related. 
because of the time and the situation. And I love the part that you woke up in real life and you had some prayer time and quiet time with the Lord because he was preparing you for this whole season that you were getting ready to go through. And he, was, he, he put this peace in you, the peace that surpasses all understanding, which is what he says he's going to do. And even in your dream, you're holding a baby, and yet, which is life, and yet there's a baby that's being passed to you in black, which is representing death. And it doesn't represent a baby, it represents a life that's coming to an end, because the baby represents life. And when you think about your mother-in-law, those last three days and, you know, the last week or so of her life, you cared for her like you would a baby. Mm -hmm. She was that baby presented to you. She was already clothed in, you know, black, which was death, which was on her. And, you know, people, even believers don't like to talk about death, but it's how we get to heaven. It's, it's part of life. And she lived... She wasn't really old, but she lived a good life. She was a believer. We know where she is. The black on her was the cancer. I mean, because Jesus is life. But, but because of this world we live in, she was cloaked in that black, that disease. But you were there for her and through, you know, through it all. And, and yet you had a peace about you. Like you say, you almost feel guilty that you don't feel worse. But that's that peace that surpasses all understanding. You can't describe it because it's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's also that strength. In that peace is strength to get you through the last days of your mother-in-law's. But then he was showing you, because I know her, because we're, rel we're relatives, Phyllis was, was playful and could be ornery. I mean, not sinful, she was, that's who she was. And in that picture, He's showing you that something that looks dead, looks not alive, is alive. She came out and she stuck her tongue out. And, and think of Phyllis as a little girl. I mean, of course, I didn't know her as a little girl, but she wouldn't have been the kind of person that would have been coming out of that picture being super sweet. She would have had that little ornery, playful <laughs> side. You know, you think of that's who she was. And that's who God made her, and He knows who she was. And she was, she was a fireball, but she was a strong believer. And mm -hmm. but she didn't mind. She didn't mind calling people out when they were wrong. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's that was who she was. But the picture was a real picture in, in the real house. Mm -hmm. So he was confirming to you, yes, she was the baby presented to you, and you accepted that responsibility of taking her in her last days when she couldn't do anything for herself just like your baby, mm -hmm. and she was already clothed in that sickness, but, but then she, she came back. She was alive, and she was playful, and so you know that there's just, there's just no question that's where she is. And, you know, for, for those of you out there that maybe you stumbled across our program by mistake, without a relationship with the Lord, it's hard to describe what Alicia is saying. At my own granddaughter's funeral, it was the same way. I was welcoming people in, and I was consoling people who had never met my grandbaby, and yet I wasn't crying because I knew, I knew she was alive like the picture came to life. She looked like there was no life in her, but we know that as believers we live on forever. And Jesus knows our pain, He knows our hurts, and He's here. And He just gives that peace that surpasses all understanding. And I saw a flash of the dream. And I stopped and I said, oh my God, this is what Ms. Robin was talking about. And I just felt the presence of the Lord all over me. Um, right then and I was like, this is what she was talking about. So I had to email you because I just, God is so wonderful. You helped me in that I, I did not know that at that time yeah. but your interpretation that dream flashed and the Holy Spirit just fell like yep this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you watch the program you may recognize Alicia she's known for a long time that the Lord speaks to her in dreams she has shared many testimonies of how the interpretations have blessed her and also how many of her dreams have come to pass Chris on the other hand is new to this biblical truth 
A little later in the program, Chris learns that the Lord has been there talking to her all along. If you can see it in your spirit, it'll manifest in the natural. What an awesome day to be alive. I just want to invite you to join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here at Love's Way Church, Lebanon, Tennessee. Come and be with us. You know what the Bible says? One of my favorite scriptures in Psalm 37, 4. It says, delight yourself in the Lord. He says, He's going to give you the desire of your heart. Then he says, trust also Him. Commit your ways unto Him and He'll bring it to pass. I want to invite you and your family to come join us on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to experience the power of God in a way that is tangible, that is awesome. Our praise and worship is dynamic. I believe God has a word, has something for you and your family. Be with us, join us. Love to see you here, 10 a.m. Sunday morning, Love's Way Church. And she was at school I was behind her following kind of like in her footsteps and all of a sudden the wind started blowing and she was a little bit heavier than me in my dream um, for some reason I was just light and smaller and I was getting picked up by the wind and was having a hard time on the path and so I was trying to grab a hold of the wall and as soon as I grabbed a hold of the concrete wall, after just a little bit, it was okay. Um, but I was falling after her, and then I was trying to make it to class, and I didn't know where to go because I hadn't been there before. And uh, it ended up getting really late. I ended up missing my exit, and I was just like, why is this, you know, where am I at? Um, it was dark then, and I felt uncomfortable, and um, I ended up finding the hallway later on of where she was because I saw her journal I saw her bag and everything else I'm like oh her and her friends are in class and I'm like okay um, should I go in class and I didn't know what to do because it was already almost over and so I ended up at a restaurant and I was trying to ask just the lady behind the counter you know what do you think I should do you know she wasn't necessarily anyone like super special or anything I didn't even know her um, but I'm like what do you think I should do and the lady at the restaurant said well first honey you're a single young lady and I want you to take a seat so that the locals don't get upset <laughs> so I took a seat and ended up deciding not to go into class because it was almost over so I would love to know what you believe the interpretation for this dream is and uh, my friend was um, she was really gonna rep me but then she was like well but you have to know that like certain people in your life aren't cool enough for you to be doing stuff with um, if I'm gonna rep you like if I'm gonna give you a good word and stuff but anyways I'm very curious to know what that means um, and I want to thank you so much for more understanding through interpretation Destiny, I'm glad you shared this dream because a lot of young people are in the same situation. You can't find your class, you miss your exit, there's a lot of that going on. That is insecurities of where am I going? Am I on the right path? You feel a little unprepared, uh, ill-equipped, and in the dream you're looking to this person that you know, that you're following in their footsteps, and then the wind comes and blows you away. The Lord is showing you we have to have people in our lives that we can glean from and learn from. But we also have to be very careful that we don't rely on them more than we do on the Holy Spirit. She didn't help you when the, when the wind was pulling you away. As a matter of fact, she decided that maybe some of your friends weren't cool enough for her. So the Lord is showing you that beauty is only skin deep. And just because someone is a believer and seem to be walking on the path and going the right way, he is your source. When you were having trouble finding her, you talked to someone in a restaurant. A restaurant represents spiritual food and, and you're talking to a woman there. So this more than likely represents someone from church that has given you advice. But it's not spiritual advice. She wants you to sit down because you might be a distraction to, to the, the town folk. God it wants you to know that there's a real balance 
And while, yes, there are mentors in our lives and there's people that we want to go to because he uses people to bless us, but never forget he is the one who is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. The Holy Spirit is the one who leads to all truth. He's the one who will not leave you or forsake you. So have friends, but don't rely more on them than you do on the Holy Spirit. Hey there, it's Destiny, and sometimes I wake up with a crazy dream, or sometimes I'm just like, does that even mean anything? And you know what I do? I go ahead and record a dream selfie on my smartphone, and I send it to Miss Robin, right when it's fresh on my mind or after I've written it down, and Miss Robin will get back with me with an interpretation to my dream, and it gives me so much understanding about my own life. It is freaky about how specific that Miss Robin can get into your life simply from you sending her a dream. She has a gift from God that um, can take a dream when God speaks to us and understand the symbolism and let us know what he's saying to us. So I want to encourage you, if you dream at night, don't waste your time. Go ahead and try it. Send Miss Robin a dream selfie and see what she has to say. You will not regret it. Catch some great Z's tonight, guys. I have dreams about different houses, moving into different houses. Um, usually they're big houses. Um, a lot of times there's water. Like a lake or a pond? Or there, water in the house, okay. um, like a big swimming pool, um, that type of thing. This is wonderful because dreams come from God. The Bible tells us in Job that people think that God doesn't talk to them, and yet He does in right. dreams. And that's in Job 33, 15. He tells us that. And throughout the Bible, He tells us. Houses represent you, your life, your lifestyle. And the reason is because we house the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, you know, we're the temple of God. So when you dream of houses, you're thinking of your life and your lifestyle, and God is showing you all these different parts of your life. And water in a dream is almost always the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he's showing you that every part of your life, he's there. And the Holy Spirit is a teacher, he's a comforter. So whatever you need, he's there in your house that you can go to when you have questions, when you hurt, when you need someone to comfort you, when you have things that you can't tell anyone, you can tell him, when you, when you want to learn something, because we all have questions, especially when we've been brought up with several different doctrines and different beliefs. He is truth, and he can give us truth, not someone else's right. truth, right. the truth. Right. And that's what your dreams are saying to you, that there's different aspects of you. You're not just this always. You're not just Troy's wife or, you know, all of us have different aspects of our life. But in every one of those homes, Holy Spirit is there and he's there to teach you. He's there to comfort you. He's there to bring us to all truth. But these are houses I've never seen before. Because there's parts of you you've never seen yet. This is future. You know everything from here back, but you don't know what right. is, is coming. And I know you get to an age where you think, I'm, this is just who I am, and I, I'm not going to change, and nothing's going to change. But there's parts of you that you don't know yet, that he's showing you, he's revealing, and he wants to reveal. What's in those, are there lots of rooms in these houses? Yes, a lot of rooms. A big, big, big houses, lots of rooms. Because that, that's lots of different opportunities. Every time you go into a different room in your life, there's another opportunity. Oh man, look there. Hmm. And look over there. Because usually in a home, a house, rooms are decorated differently. They have different meanings. A bathroom is where you cleanse or you purge. A living room is where you sit and you fellowship one with another. The kitchen is where we're fed spiritually. So all these different rooms have different symbolisms for you and there are different opportunities for you. And where are you comfortable? Are you more comfortable in the bedroom? That's intimacy and that's a relationship. And so when you dream these, what? think about what room stands out because that's, that could either be where he's getting ready to bring new change into your life or he may be revealing to you 
Um, the kitchen is where you're comfortable, that where you serve one another and you feed and, and eat together. Or maybe, maybe the den is most comfortable for you because you're a laid back kind of person. He's revealing your personalities to you and your, your strengths to you in those dreams. He's very intimate. He knows you completely. And he's, he's talking to you specifically about your life. And you can ask him, what does this mean? What are you showing me? Because mm -hmm. I'm giving you a big picture, but there's details in those, in those rooms that he's showing you. That's cool. You have anything else? No. Thank you for sharing. That was not scary, was it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel good about him? Do you feel good? Yes. Okay, because it, it, yes. should, it, should, it should be a... A feeling of exhortation or contemplation, and um, there's no warning in these dreams. These are just these are dreams to bring comfort and to answer questions and to bring peace, which is what it sounds like right now. That that's what you, you know the most that you need in your life right now yes. is that, and he yes. knows that. Some people who will sit and talk to me, most of their dreams are warnings or uh, correction even, or answers to questions, but yours right now is a need of, of comfort, of peace, mm -hmm. settling of emotions, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And he's doing it. Do you have a group of friends who are curious about the meaning of their dreams? Or perhaps you're looking for something new and different for your next party? Why not invite a group of friends over to share dreams and maybe get the chance to be on TV? Typically, people are more comfortable in their own home or the home of a friend. However, coming to the Dreamcatcher Studios is also an option. God is talking to you in dreams, and He wants you to know what He's saying. My name is Tiffany, and um, I just wanted to uh, say a little something about the Dreamcatcher Catcher Dream Journal. Now before this book, I did used to dream, but it was probably maybe like one dream a week, like one good dream a week that had like substance in it. Well, after I got this book, I was dreaming every single night. This book filled up with my dreams within three months and I was in need of another book. And so I said to Miss Robin, I said, it's like your books are like a dream catalyst that enables you to just dream more and hear more from the Lord. I needed another book, so I got two so that I can be prepared. I should probably get three. But it's a great book, and you should make sure that you get one. Next time on Dreamcatcher, Carol Sarah asked the age-old question, why are we here? The answer came in a vision that was so vivid it changed her life forever. Shirley shares a dream about a beloved pastor using profanity from the pulpit. While Shirley and Carol's dreams seem different, the interpretations reveal the same raging battle. Catch Shirley and Carol here next time on Dreamcatcher and catch your dreams.